Manchester United are back in action on Saturday after the international break. Newcastle. Steve Bruce's side, United need a win. But more importantly than that, this video is going to take a look at what United's best 11 and formation is for the rest of the season, in my own opinion. What I think Solskjaer should be using and the starting 11 that I think will get the best out of this squad. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe as well if you're new to United People's TV because nearly 50% of people who watch the videos aren't subscribed. So nearly half of you click that subscribe button. But let's take a look at what I think is the best formation and the best starting 11 that Solskjaer can use between now and the end of the season. But before you look at the starting 11, I think it's important to look at the formation. United and Solskjaer have typically used a 4-2-3-1. But I don't really think that it's going to get the most out of this team. I think we should be using a diamond in midfield. I feel it's going to be the best way to get our strongest 11 on that pitch. So I'm going to go with a four, what is it, one, two, a diamond. Let's just call it, a, I'm playing a diamond formation. It's much simpler to call it like that. And in goal, I'm going for David De Gea. Now, obviously, Dean Henderson's arrival means that De Gea's place now is not guaranteed at all. And I think Solskjaer's managed that very well, giving Henderson a new contract, brought him into the team, giving him the cup games in which he's got two clean sheets and made two great saves. So either De Gea ups his game in the starting 11 or Henderson is going to come right in and take his spot. And I'm interested to see how that continues to develop across the season. But I think we might see Henderson there before the end of the year. In my own opinion, you might disagree with that. Now at left back, Alex Tellez has to go straight into this 11. And with this formation, you see how narrow it is because it doesn't have two wingers. It relies on the fullbacks to add that width. And that's where Tellez is going to be so much better than Luke Shaw. Overlapping runs, natural width going forward, an actual attacking threat. He'll offer whoever's playing left forward the overlapping runs to take the defenders away from them. And Alex Tellez is a player I'm very excited to see. Although Van der Beek, I still feel, is probably our best signing this summer, I think Tellez is a player that can probably have the most impact in our starting eleven and the shape that we have. Now, centre-backs, there's so much debate about that, but I'm going for Maguire and I'm going for Baye. And Maguire has to improve. Clearly, what happened in Greece really affected him because he has been shocking at the start of this season. And that's me being polite. Maguire, he won't ever be a Van Dijk. We did overpay for him. But that's because we're United. We overpay typically for players. Or we just don't sign him. But Maguire has to improve. And I don't think the Solskjaer will throw him under the bus. I think he'll continue to start him. Now, his partner, Bai, I think it should be Bai over Lindelof. That's without question. I've said that for a long time, and we all have. Now, it will be interesting to see what happens now that Tuan Zebe is back fit. Because I think Tuan Zebe is probably the blend of Lindelof and, and Bai, sorry, together. The athleticism, but also the ability on the ball that Bai doesn't quite have. So I think we could see Axel there at some point this season, but I think as a partnership, it's going to have to be Maguire and Bai. And maybe you can see Tenemengi as well, the younger centre-back coming through our ranks, but I think Twanzebe will get a chance before he does. Now, right back, it's Wan-Bissaka, and I think Wan-Bissaka in this style and formation, he could be a real weakness because we need him with the width going forward to offer it to her, whoever I'm putting in the starting eleven up front. That's not why Masaka's natural game. Naturally, he's very defensive-minded. He's very good naturally at that. But what he has to do is improve going forward. And he did improve going forward at points last season. But he lost it towards the end. And he's not got it at the start of this season either. So wan has to improve in that position, in my opinion. Now we move on to the midfield. And this is where a lot of the questions will be asked. Because for me, it's the strongest part of this squad by far. Now my four, I'm going for Matic at the bottom of the diamond with Pobre on the left with Van der Beek alongside him, and Fernandez in the number 10 role. I want to explain exactly all of them. I think Matic in the defensive midfield role, we need him. We need him to protect our defence because with a formation like this that's stacked in midfield, but it's stacked with more aggressive midfielders, you need Matic to basically screen the defence and do the job to win the ball and pass it to them and do nothing else. I think he does that better than anybody in this squad. I'm not sure whether he's going to start every game. I'm not sure whether McTominay can operate in that role. And I don't think Fred can operate in that role. So for me, it's a weakness of the squad that I would have liked to have seen addressed in the summer, but we didn't sign a defensive midfielder. So Matic is playing there. Now, the real questions are all about how do you get Pogba, Van der Beek, 
and Fernandes in the starting 11 together. And for me, this is the best way to do it. Pogba on the left there, Van der Beek alongside him with Fernandes as the number 10. Now, you could alternate, I think, Fernandes and Van der Beek, depending on what you want to do, what the style of the team is at the time, whether we're 1-0 up or 1-0 down. I think you can change and switch that. Pogba on the left, I think that's the given position. It's where he played for Juventus. He played more naturally further wide, wide sorry, on the left than he did there. But it seems to be left central midfield is his position now under Solskjaer and hopefully he comes back from France with a bit of verve in his game because I think like Maguire like every other player in this team Pogba started this season very slow and very poorly and has to improve and I think this formation will get the most out of him now Van der Beek is a player that hasn't started a game in the league for United yet but for me absolutely has to start Van der Beek offers a different quality to Pogba a different quality to Fernandes and I think something that United are so crap at is possession-based football. Actually holding the ball, moving it between players and not seeming shit scared of it and actually having the ability to do so. And I think Van der Beek offers that in abundance compared to any other midfielder. Offers a real calm. His running into space is superb. And in this position, it allows him to do late runs into the box or on the outskirts of the box if and when he needs to. We need to be starting Van der Beek, man. We can't be bringing him on at the, in the 80th minute, 75th minute when... Games are dead or just let him start. Let him dictate the game. I think he's going to dictate from deep much better than Pogba can. I think Pogba always seems to get caught on the ball. He's better at receiving the ball when he's in the opposition half. I think van der Beek will be more naturally astute at receiving it in our half from Matic and shifting it on towards Pogba. I think that should be the style. And Fernandez, of course, he's the centrepiece of this whole team. More so than Paul Pogba is now. And allowing him to sort of express himself in that number 10 role to really be the player that bridges the midfield in the attack. That's what you want Bruno Fernandes to be. He can obviously shoot from outside the box. But we need that number 10 to have that killer pass through to the front two, whoever that's going to be. And also to find Tellez on the overlap, to find Wamba Saka on the overlap. Maybe Pogba and Van der Beek on the overlap as well. And I think Fernandes is the player most capable, clearly, of doing that and of bridging that midfield together with that attack in the same way I think that Matic can bridge that defence with that midfield. You need those two link pieces to make the style work properly and I think Fernandes will do that. Now up front there's more questions to be asked. What about Anderson Cavani? Does he start? I've gone here for Rashford and I've gone for Martial as my starting two up front. I think Martial, it, he's the given. Paul Scholes strangely sort of backtracked on his, on his compliments of Martial last season by saying he's not a number nine whatsoever. I think Martial improved into a fantastic number nine last year. Yes, he started the season slowly. So has Pogba, so has Maguire, so has every United player. Doesn't mean I'd drop him. Obviously, he's suspended for three games. So I think we will see Cavani start. No, actually, we won't see Cavani start against Newcastle because he can't fucking play either. It'll probably be Greenwood and Rashford starting up front. But I, United don't have strength with width. We didn't sign Jadon Sancho. Rashford, he's good on the left-hand side, but maybe... No, he's, he's better on the left, I think. And I, that's why I'm putting Rashford down as a left centre-forward here. I think he will drift a little bit left, drift to work with Tellez. That's what he needs. I think that partnership will help Rashford massively because it will take a defender away from him and having that partnership will allow him to express himself a little bit more cut inside and get those fiery thunderbolt shots away because that's what Rashford's about he's not really a finesse man is he he's more about power rather than placement and then Martial I'm going for the partner to him up front but in that position we do have alternatives now you could play Cavani there when he's fit you could play Greenwood there when he's fit and with Rashford there there's four players that you can interchange in two centre forward roles now where does that leave players like Dan James where does that leave Facundo Palestri I have no idea about is it Palestri not Palestri anyway Facundo, I've no idea where he fits into this team, what his best players places, because I've no idea. I've never seen him play before. I think naturally he's more of a winger, so this formation wouldn't get too much out of him. But I think the strength in this team lies in midfield, and Solskjaer has to therefore get a formation which gears towards it. And for me, that's a diamond midfield with Matic at the base, with Pogba and Van der Beek there in the midfield. And think about it, you have got options there from the bench as well. You can bring Fred in, you can bring McTominay in. United, we don't have much strength in depth anyway, really, but if we have it anywhere, it's in midfield. And that's why I think we should play a, a formation which 
relies and is stacked towards the midfield rather than the width. The 4-2-3-1 doesn't work when you don't have a proper left winger or a proper right winger. Therefore, I think switching it up to something like this would suit us better. But let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I think the debates are all about the two centre-backs. The debates are probably in midfield in every position in terms of where you play players. And also up front in terms of whether you start Cavani or not. But I think Cavani's been brought in as a better backup than Igalo rather than somebody who comes in and just plays every week for us. He's only here on a short-term deal. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't stunt the growth of Rashford or Martial to have Cavani in as a, as a, as a stopgap. I think Cavani will come in and he'll play plenty of games. I think he'll start against PSG and hopefully he scores. But this is the formation I want to see Solskjaer use. A diamond in midfield with two up top. No real wingers, but using Tellez and wan as the natural whip. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. There'll be plenty of debate, I'm sure, in pretty much every position. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new to the channel. And I know that 50% of you always are, so make sure the half of you subscribe. But Newcastle on Saturday, would this formation work to get three points at St. James's Park? And then it's PSG next. Sonic's got to change. And hopefully, it's this.